Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Kapil and today in this video we are going to talk about automotive bootloader. Okay, so we uh, if you are working in automotive industry like uh, in a company like Bosch or it could be Continental, it could be any other service company, let's say it could be KPIT or any other uh, company, LNT, ATC or TCS, anything. So you will always uh, come across the uh, terminology called bootloader. It could be an automotive bootloader. Me, uh, we always uh, uh, see this kind of implementation available in different areas. Okay, so uh, this automotive bootloader or is slightly different than the, the bootloader which is uh, running in other industry. Okay, so here in, in this video, we are going to talk about the basic concept of the bootloader. Uh, very starting from very beginning and then we will try to go ahead on this topic Okay, so what what exactly is mean mean by bootloader? Okay, <clears throat> so bootloader is is a kind of a software which will facilitate uh, the Application update. Okay, so we always run or the we have an issue and on our issue We have an application. Okay, which will be running it could be a uh, door control it could be a reverse view camera any application okay so the, that application will have a certain functionality okay and let's say there then there is an update okay i i wanted certain features to be implemented later on okay or there could be a, some bug in that application we always face such issues right so let's say uh, while during certain uh, situation i am not able to uh, basically capture or there is a sluggish response in the reverse view camera or something like that okay or could be any other functionality I, I wanted to add something where uh, i can i can give some highlight uh, to something or uh, indication or the pop-up or something like that okay so basically the concept here is that i want an update in an application software okay <clears throat> without uh, bringing the issue at uh, the garage or it could be uh, at the development environment so how could i facilitate that Okay, so that is the biggest question even in the in our mobile also you you will see certain application is there is an update and you will be able to download also so, so let's say if I wanted to perform the same thing in my car Okay, and you will always see there are some update available in your car and you can do that So the reason behind that is this let's say boot order because of the boot order. There is a software uh, Let's say which is already um, available. Okay inside the issue Okay and now uh, uh, on top of that software you will be able to uh, let's say which will provide a base uh, to download the other uh, software okay so if you talk about the app, uh, our laptop okay so there we have os running there also bootloader on top of that os and on top of that there will be an application so <clears throat> basically uh, on top of uh, let's say window or on top of linux we are going to window application or the linux application which we have but this os will facilitate or provide that uh, let's say a feature where we can update or the download to the application so here in this case let's say if we do not have os running or there could be some os running in our pcu let's say but basically a bootloader is a kind of a software which will provide this facility okay so there are different variant in that also let's say primary bootloader secondary bootloader we'll talk more about it actually uh, in the coming uh, in the coming slides okay so you see this slide automotive bootloader where we will be facilitating this update so there are now update another concept which was coming like a FOTA okay firmware update over the air and stuff like that but we are restricting we will restrict our scope at the first stage so what is the purpose uh, you see the update of an application add a new feature or it could be a remove a bug okay so this one we already talk about this um and so this is the main purpose okay update bootloader so there could be a other possibility where we have a certain problem in the bootloader itself and how would you how we will try to avoid that okay so then we need to think about that possibility as well and there we we need a different strategy to perform this okay now um, there could be other uh, thing is that so there, there could be an exchange of information within uh, from the bootloader and application so uh, there are certain things where i need a, a communication between the bootloader and application to uh, tell something or to receive something so there there is a possibility where we can do this okay <clears throat> so coming to the type of uh, bootloader so we have uh, basically two type of bootloader one is the single level bootloader and another is a two level bootloader okay so single single level bootloader where <clears throat> we have only one bootloader software which will facilitate uh, the download of an application okay <clears throat> so there is a no other software which uh, will be available 
okay <clears throat> so uh, this says that primary boot order uh, there is a no secondary boot order primary boot order will be flashed uh, let's say the placed in the flash memory which will require to be or uh, let's say uh, flashed using the debugger okay <clears throat> so always when well, whenever doing the development we have a debugger um, we have or uh, let's say we will have a development environment over right with the debugger where using which we will be able to flash our boot order so we have a certain uh, boot code basically where we have a flash driver we have our uh, programming sequence okay such thing so where we have well, let's say if you talk about the <coughs> download over the can so there we have this scan driver the flash driver which will be always available and using which we will be able to download our application software application software could be in other format as well okay but this this uh, bootloader will facilitate let's say there could be some tool we all always talk about the download tool and that download tool will allow us to update the application but this uh, bootloader which we need to flash using the debugger or there could be some ide available okay which using which we will do that it could be a trace 32 it could be i system debugger or it could be anything okay which depending on the project which you are running on so this is the kind of software or this is a bootloader software which will be available okay now we talk about the two level bootloader okay so in the two level bootloader we have a primary and secondary bootloader. there are two kind of software now available okay <clears throat> and what we will say that primary bootloader will require to be flashed using debugger okay and uh, yeah and the secondary bootloader will be placed in the ram area okay we we will place in the ram area so <clears throat> so what we are saying that because primary bootloader still will go into the flash memory of the controller or process, uh, let's say controller in in on, on which we are going to work upon so now we have a separation over here one is the primary bootloader one is the secondary bootloader so we are dividing into two parts okay primary means it is the main core actually main part actually okay and secondary is kind of an extension okay so this is this is what we call okay and this is primary bootloader secondary bootloader so we call generally as a pbl or sbl in in term in terms of terminology so that has extra advantages okay and if you do go with this two level bootloader so we are going to talk about uh, that as well uh, and that's in coming slides but let's say before that let's let's see what exactly type of bootloader is as i already mentioned about this we we can have a download over the can or the lin flex ray or ethernet okay so <clears throat> what uh, what exactly mean by that a uh, boot order or can based boot order lean based boot order so let's say i have a one core software okay where we have a driver for can and we will also place the driver of the uds or, or not driver basically we will also implement the uds services there to facilitate uh, this uh, up, or let's say the download on application so basically uds service kind of download service uh, let's say which we call it in the uh, 34 36 and 37 which is the standard terminology in uds uh, for the uh, request download data transfer and data transfer exit okay which will be there and on top of that we have a can driver available so there will be a mapping okay there will be a, some request which will be going uh, let's say from a tester or there could be a, some request uh, from a tool side where it will receive the controller booter will receive those requests okay and this service basically uh, will have let's say 34 service okay where they will request and basically uh, it is it is in in only format or let's say uh, have the can protocol as a physical layer so that's why we um, can let's say we call as an uh, can or uds okay or let's say so that's why we have a can and on top of that let's say we have a uds software and using that we will be able to update the application software so that we will divide again application will be divided into different blocks because it there might be a possibility that it application size is very big and we need to divide that into further blocks okay and so the, those blocks basically uh, that's why we have a uds uh, service and that it will have a such treatment using which we can perform those activity okay and there could be some other possible download of the serial bus also is possible so generally in the lower in the previous uh, yeah uh, uh, we have a download over the serial also was possible so that's why it was very simple and straightforward there as well so now we little go ahead on this and let's talk about the single level boot order in deep so as we already uh, mentioned about the single level boot order where we have a flash memory okay we have a pbl area we have a let's say uh, the uh, application code okay and uh, as we mentioned that there could be example let's say the i system win idea uh environment debugger environment and uh, using which uh, let's say we flash the pbl into this area we will have a linker file which will facilitate this 
uh, sect section uh, different sector creation okay which will facilitate that and using which we divide the sector let's say specific memory block for the pb and specific memory block for the application we generally use them some ld files or linker files there are different extensions available different controller but we will use those uh, files to configure uh, the different um, uh, memory blocks okay there are different um, still still there are some more information which we come up in the for this detail will come up later but this let's say there could be some application block which will have configured like this and now using this block i need to program this block okay <clears throat> so for this i my controller should have a capability of flash to flash programming because my application code and the boot order code are running at the same the same uh, uh, flash memory right so if controller is not supporting such things then we will not be able to achieve this and that is what is one of the important point while considering the single level boot order okay yeah so generally the, the different terminology is being used for this as well we call it in flash boot order as well okay for this but yeah we, we will have some generally this kind of environment running on a single level boot order now when we talk about the two level boot order we will have a <coughs> As I mentioned, there will be a one uh, PBL or uh, primary boot order. There will be a one more, which uh, secondary boot order, which will go into the RAM area, and then uh, from a secondary boot order, we will update the or erase then download the application to the, uh, another flash memory block. Okay, so this is this way. Let's say we did not, we are basically not programming from flash to flash. We are just programming from a RAM to uh, yeah uh, flash uh, memory, right? So that that we do not require. A, Flash to flash programming capability we because we are uh, programming or uh, we are just downloading uh, the images into the ram block and from ram uh, execution we are just uh, 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 programming the program uh, uh, let's say our program code or the flash memory okay so there uh, it has certain advantages because one of the already uh, things which i mentioned that you need not to have a flash to flash memory uh, programming capability other things is let's say you you will have a separation so you have an extension of the uh, boot order where you will still get a chance to let's say there could be some bug uh, in the boot order itself you will still get a chance to update here because there could there could be some problem when this is basically this need not this sbl you need not to program using an, a debugger you will have a separate binary for that and using which you will be able to program and similarly that you will be having the application binary as well using which you can program it so certainly uh, you are avoiding a, a, a possibility or, or or let's say the bug let's say if you have a certain bug in um, sbl then you can still update it okay and uh, there is a still um, there is a one third uh, reason uh, which is the uh, probably an extra advantage over for the pbl over sbl let's say sbl as the second third advantage is you will get extra security or in terms of let's say because here you will the sbl let's once you download the application this uh, there will be no access available to this SBL code. Okay, so you you will have this third advantage. So that's why uh, yeah, it is it is uh, many uh, companies will go kind of for this kind of strategy, where you will have a two level basically two P one is PBL and one is SBL. So there are two kind of uh, yeah uh, basically PBL and SBL. There are two, two kind of boot order two level boot order basically, which will have. So there are other concepts uh, over this as well and where we, you, you will have some redundant uh, boot order where in case of some failure you will be able to. So there could be some AB uh, uh, block, let's say AB uh, concept also will be there or there could be some extra uh, functionality where you have a redundant uh, uh, blocks, let's say while downloading into second and you will have a still there could be some error you can still remain in the first one. So, there are different uh, complexity um, uh, will add on to this depending on your requirement but this is the yeah first and second these are the simplest way to achieving the boot order functionality okay so now oh, internally even to this also we could have multiple blocks of the application okay so that we will check a little bit again so as i mentioned there are advantages of the two level booters so first one is the sbl will load it into the ram memory which will not be accessible after the successful application which makes it more secure that is one we i already talk about many controller will not support flash to flash erase and programming in in such case to your bootloader is necessary third one is assume there is a bug in bootloader and because of which we can't download or update the application which make issue non um, usable okay so there is a still possibility where you will have a certain um, issue okay in the uh, down erase or programming sequence and you will still able to achieve uh, using this 
special SBL could be or uh, will be capable uh, to updating the PBL as well using which we can solve the bug in PBL as well. So you need to let's say if you have a bug as we talk about if you have a bug in SBL but that you can easily resolve because you you do not to yeah you can just develop your update your code again and you can flash it again but yeah what could be the problem what could what will happen if you have a bug in the PBL itself okay and um, that is what is the biggest challenge because if you have a problem in PBL itself then uh, certainly it is very difficult to update the PBL so you need to, to develop a kind of special uh, software which will be capable of updating the PBL software itself because there should be some mapping because generally VBL will have a certain <coughs> restriction or protection which will not allow this update and you will not be able to uh, update the PBL software right so uh, and it is it is very much necessary in, in terms of uh, the security because otherwise anyone and anyone can just update uh, this uh, PBL software and uh, yeah it, 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 it can override it basically and uh, there could be a high level of security bridge there right so it is we need extra security there to um, achieve this however there are certain possibility using which we have certain special SBL kind of software using which we can achieve this okay so this one is also possible if we go with the two level strategy two level booter strategy and we can st still achieve this so these are the major advantages in comparison uh, uh, which we have okay so now let's say we go to the little graphical view probably let's say where let's say where does bootloader reside actually so we can see this is the memory area and we have a pbl area as i mentioned there could be a pbl we have a sbl and we have applications so there is a memory section available and we will do that actually so and now what will happen let's say this is placed inside the our ecu okay so everything which will be there which will be inside the ecu okay now a uh, flash memory pbl can contain multiple blocks of the flash memory as i mentioned so it is it is not necessary that uh, pbl will have only single block okay so if it is possible that we can have a multiple blocks of pbl and each block we need to probably uh, yeah uh, program it basically or flash it correctly right so then second one is the sbl can have also multiple blocks okay and it is required to be an application applicant also can have multiple multiple blocks and definitely application will have a more blocks each block will require to be validated before flash into the memory unlock the issue crc check issue specific application validation is required so we will generally call this a, uh, a programming sequence reprogramming sequence we generally come across this kind of terminology what exactly mean by that so there is a predefined sequence okay which we need to follow for the programming and reprogramming what is mean by reprogramming over here is when we already uh, did the programming okay and when we do the second time okay um uh, programming so that's why it called as reprogramming because there is already one of the valid application is running inside the your ecu and you need to still update the application so whenever you do the first time programming there is no application software available and uh, you 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 already know that there is no application software and you need to do uh, you're doing it first time but whenever you do reprogramming you have already available right or application software so that is what is the change and uh, then that's why we always uh, talk about the reprogramming and programming sequence so what exactly we mean by that and what exactly we need to do in that case so we have a multiple blocks of an application we need to let's say before programming it definitely we need to validate each block because there could be a possibility that it is not correct so generally that's why we use a signature pattern in, in inside the each block to validate that whether it is correct or not we could opt for any kind of mechanism for the signature depending on the our our uh, basically strategy uh, we can use um, yeah a different security algorithm as well to do that okay but however straightforward could be the some magic numbers or it could be some other things which is which will be very much easy however let's say we could generate the signature pattern you know, using the certain algorithm okay there are different uh, security algorithm available like let's say <coughs> hashing and that's it yeah depending on the kind of security we are going to achieve we have different algorithm available and so generally if you need to program it generally we go with the unlocking of issue what is mean by unlocking of issue is the 27 service okay the the security service basically which is uh, available in the diagnostic which we need to uh, basically uh, implement or uh, do the do this crc check basically there are different crc mechanism available crc 16 okay so there are different uh, C, uh, crc check or uh, mechanism available and we need to do that to validate our whether our block is 
correctly downloaded or not and that we need to verify generally as a part of our transfer exit uh, 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 we will uh, validate these blocks individually and do that and issue specific application ready so there are certain issue which will require certain extra execution it could be read data by identity file it could be certain extra dtc read or certain dtc there are different different uh, basically requirement depending on the depending on the oem okay how they wanted to go ahead on that so that exactly we need to do that in in in, in this case okay so that is that is what overall uh, the uh, oral concept is uh, of the reprogramming and programming but okay so let's continue uh, from where we stop okay so in this i think we already talked about this uh, multi level multi uh, blocks of this uh, application sbl and pbl which will be going to reside in the ecu okay and we will have a different uh, sector for that as well so <clears throat> what will happen let's say in, in this case let's say so we could have um, additional uh, let's say blocks which will be uh, for the signal database and generally there are different naming convention will be used over here it could be a sdb a signal database or there could be other naming also the different depending on the project it will be used so generally what will it contain so it will generally uh, contain the signal database so we have a can signal we have a lint signal so all those signals de uh, data definitions basically what is the uh, start length and uh, what exactly the, those details will be available over here and there will be a complete uh, image for that will be available and other than that fault memory so there will be dtc information and snapshot record which will be stored um, uh, in the flash memory at specific address so we, it will contain all this information okay which is related to so we have a different dtcs let's say which we are going to send or uh, let's say trigger all the lock uh, uh, depending on the certain condition error conditions okay so those uh, basically will be available and stored there actually okay so memory alignment so uh, it is it is very important to uh, discuss on this topic because uh, we will have a different alignment on for the erase read and write okay of the block okay and it is it is important to know about this because um, in in any case let's say if you wanted to erase okay particular particular say if you think that you wanted to erase only four byte or five five byte from that primary particular memory block then it, it, it cannot be done because it is it there always a different uh, let's say this memory will have certain alignment okay and that's why it is not possible okay so you always need to erase a complete block of a memory so uh, even even uh, if you and because of that it is it is taking less time okay for the erase otherwise it will take more time so and let's say controller does not support erase only specific byte in most cases okay so you will erase complete sector only so then next is read and write only uh, specific byte is possible so there could be a it is always possible that you have a, a 20 uh, let's say 24 or um, it's a 16 byte alignment 16 bit alignment so you will uh, at the most you will be able to read two byte or let's say depending on the which kind of alignment you are supporting by the controller and you will be able to do that okay so that's why it is important always to know that uh, what will be the alignment for the read what will be the alignment for the write and what is basically most in the most cases it is will be a complete uh, let's say sector or a block only so this is always we need to consider because whenever we are going to erase uh, erase so then we will erase the complete uh, memory block okay and then we will write uh, the uh, individual bytes on top of it okay <clears throat> now let's again consider there was a yeah, point regarding the communication with the boot order application i already mentioned about this uh, let's say a bit early but yeah let's talk about this again so let's say when uh, there is a situation where you wanted to this will come into the picture and when when uh, basically you are <clears throat> uh, going to download the particular application okay so this is, this is your boot order and this is your application so application and boot order so whenever a uh, boot order is let's say uh, validating the application for the download it it gone through the all the stages and it it is it is being downloaded now okay and download is is done so now what will happen let's say now i need to give us control uh, back to the application or control to the application because um, I, I, I am I'm comfortable that my bootloader has done his it is functionality and it is a time to switch to the application and application will be running after that right so it is it is important to do this transient uh, okay so whenever there is a bootloader and there is an application so <clears throat> what exactly will uh, bootloader will do bootloader will write 
particular flag at particular memory location that consider the flag name as an um yeah let's say uh, control transfer okay so control transfer could be the name or, or there are different naming convention which we can use over here okay let's consider i will not give a specific example or specific name because it is it is it is important uh yeah uh so we we should use some generic term over here so it is let's say the flag which is the flag which is control transfer flag and which is being set by the bootloader and once that is being done so now we will give a transfer we will we know that bootloader needs to give a control to the application once application validation is successful then bootloader need to communicate uh let's say application needs to need to communicate with the bootloader in case of application update is required right so while well, valid application is running this is the case basically so in this case bootloader will write this uh, or set this flag okay now the control will be given to the application on the next boot um, so application will check this flag if it is set then it will be understood it will understand that okay uh, basically uh, yeah it will basically set the con uh, control in the application so now there is a case let's say for the reprogramming okay so in the in in case of reprogramming okay <clears throat> let's say uh, there is an application valid application is running okay and uh, yeah uh, now application wanted to say that now you take a uh, control back okay application wanted to say that now you take control back and there is a request for a reprogramming i wanted to update the application again so what will happen in the in this case uh, basically so application will write this flag there will be another flag okay so that flag will be written there okay and that flag uh, will uh, uh, be used to communicate to the bootloader that now though even though a valid application is available okay you need to stay in the bootloader itself so based on that flag bootloader will take a control back okay and be reside in the, inside the bootloader itself so this is the there are different way uh, basically okay so uh, one flag where we, we could use it where the, everything is correct and bootloader will give a wanted to give a control back to the application okay uh, and it is not necessary that we will use the flag over here as well and just we can directly give a control because everything is okay okay uh, so <clears throat> in, in this case basically reprogramming okay uh, in reprogramming this, this flag will be used okay so next next uh, uh, will be the complete download sequence okay as i, as I think we mentioned uh, previously uh, before so uh, programming or reprogramming uh, sequence what exactly will happen uh, in this case is the, there will be a request uh, for the uh, uh, programming or reprogramming using the uh, 1002 command which is a uh, 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 programming session request okay or there could be a uh, yeah other request basically basically 1002 is the request uh, which is which is going to happen in this case after this request uh, let's say again um, uh, security basically we need to unlock the ecu using the security access service 27 so again the iteration of 2701 2702 will happen unlocking the ecu will happen there here we could use the different mechanism it could be a uh, different uh, it could be a three byte seed and a key or there could be a four uh, byte seed and key uh, depending on the which type of um, yeah strategy we're going to go through and there could be different mechanism random seed generation or there could be other uh, static seed generation mechanism which we could use it over here so depending on that it will uh, it will basically it will be done so then oem specific read data binder that it could be a software version read or it could be a additional thing basically uh, where we wanted to check and perform some of the um, activity uh, before uh, let's say it could be a certain read certain action routine control or certain like that so signature verification of signature there are multiple things which we can do over here <clears throat> and depending on oem then <clears throat> the ma major uh, sequence will come into the picture so it could be the so sequence we always need to erase first because we will doing the erase then programming okay so erase will be first point where we need to do and this is the there mostly the the complete let's say it will it will go in a single run we, we should not basically interrupt the erase operation and there are because it is depending on the which kind of controller which we are going to use it will execute that direct functionality okay so we will always execute this in one go okay and um, after that we will follow the programming okay and in in this case let's say if we have an interruption before before uh, let's say after erase and before reprogramming then um, yeah basically uh, there is a problem so and control should stay into the bootloader itself because we know that there is application is being erased now 
<clears throat> and uh, we cannot give a control back to the application reason behind that because application there is no more valid application available so we always <clears throat> need to think about this uh, point whenever we are developing a boot order so we need to consider at any stage at any stage it could be here here or here any stage if there could be an interruption happen then what would be the our strategy to handle that actually so that is definitely we need to consider so after erase there could be a programming where we will follow the complete sequence of 34 36 and 37 uds service so if you want more detail on this then you can just write a comment on this i will try to answer this uh, where we have a complete sequence of 34 and what would be the frame format for this and other details i would i can give if, if you really need this information just uh, comment on uh, this video and i will try to answer you about this then next is oem specific application validation okay so there is a, always we need to perform an application validation after the programming right so we have a certain check where we will say that okay this application is correct we will verify the signature or stuff like that we will do that and then we will trigger the ecu reset so ecu reset is again part of the diagnostic service which we, which we are going to do over here and uh, and then it will be done this sequence is complete and then once we'll do that then we will give a control to the application there could be a flag which we can use or there could be a no flag which does not require also that is also fine for us the next next slide is is basically about the this only in general how exactly it is going to happen so <clears throat> overall how it looks like so what are the different sequence which we will have or which we will face so we will have a programming session request then uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah I, I think this is this is a bit wrong over here i think I, I changed it but it is not getting corrected so we will have a download pbl at the first stage then uh, yeah uh, basically we will do the yeah uh, download out of sbl okay and then then we will have this complete sequence programming session request and then security access then erase then program and then issue reset so this is this uh, complete sequence which we need to i think you it is not being corrected over here uh, but yeah i think I, I need to correct it so it is not correct but you you can understand the flow basically it is a pbl sbl and then uh, the uh, uh, programming sequence which we need to follow okay <clears throat> so uh, what exactly is is the startup sequence okay so we always uh, come up with in interview what are the different sequence which what uh, which will go, which is going to happen uh, before the boot order will come into the picture right so generally uh, there will be always power on self trace there are different naming convention which is being used for this in different uh, direction okay for this but yeah generally it will be a any basic test of hardware which is a power on self test which call we call and that is going to happen at the initial stage uh, immediately after power on and next will be the startup code the startup code generally will be provided by the uh, the microcontroller vendor it could be a nxp or st or it could be any other uh, yeah uh, microcontroller provider uh, where they will provide the startup code and what will happen inside this startup code so do we need to alter this startup code or not okay that is also very important to know because uh, whenever we deal with the boot record then we always uh, have uh, some ambiguity let's say what exactly because generally we do not touch upon this startup code itself and we will not be knowing about that as well so <clears throat> just to get an, a little overview about that also so generally it will contain the stake pointer initialization where we wanted to provide the information related to stake pointer ray initialization and jump to the pbl so where we have well, let's say pbl code is a primary boot to code reside at a particular memory address and i wanted to give a jump to the particular address so then really uh, we will use the function pointer uh, to do this functionality and we will call uh, this pbs start address from there okay and it will give a jump to uh, the, the jump there actually okay so this is very important certain times that we will do certain modification in startup code as well and depending on our need whether we need that or not okay so it is it is uh, uh, decision is specific uh, to the requirement and which we need to take it and once we have a jump to the pbl then yeah we basically we will reside there itself okay and uh, let's say we will always have a check because uh, sbl is not running at the time because sbl will we need to download and which will go into the sbl but at this at this stage sbl will not be available right so um then in 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 this case uh, basically we will check whether the valid application is uh, present or not okay and if valid application is present then we will directly give a jump to the application otherwise 
yeah it will it will stay inside the pbl so there are different strategies uh, which will be um, yeah uh, coming okay depending on the uh, need so in a certain cases if you have a corrupted memory application downloaded if you wanted to recover from there there could be some uh, extra logic which you could think about it and you will force uh, that to come back to the bootloader in certain cases and to save the uh, yeah, issue basically so there are different strategy available over here where you can force the application to come back to the uh, pbl and again you can do because application is not very done corrupted okay so there are different strategy where you can do it but depending on your choice whether you wanted to go for it or not <clears throat> so overall um, yeah i try to cover most of the concept over here or uh, maybe uh, if if you have a comment and if you see there is a uh, there is a different understanding which we have and you have then definitely you can comment it and i would like to answer uh, your queries and um, that's up for the best actually um, your suggestions are always welcome maybe there could be a scope of improvement over here i may be wrong somewhere uh, i would like to apologize for that and uh, you can correct it uh, and give a suggestion okay uh, to improve further on this and definitely i, I would like to um, um, give some more insight data on on uh, certain on this topic uh, if you would like okay so thanks for watching this video if you are still here with me uh, it is it is it is very great uh, you um, covered the complete session and it is it is uh, achievement for me basically if you are uh, till here so uh, thanks uh, for watching this video have a nice day see you again with a new video have a great day